Hey, this is Stefan James from Project Life Mastery. Today I'm going to share with you five steps to building your own online business that can make you over $10,000 a month. And honestly, if you master these steps, you can make as much money as you desire because the five steps I'm going to share with you are the very steps, the very process that every successful entrepreneur that I know of, every successful business that has freedom and abundance, they've gone through these five steps. These five steps are universal and applicable to every business out there. So let's dive in. The first step is you got to identify, you got to identify what your vehicle is, what your business is, and then you've got to commit to it fully. What do I mean by that? There's so many opportunities out there of what you could pursue. There's so many online business models and strategies and opportunities. You got to pick which is the right fit for you. Maybe for you it's selling on Amazon, building your own brand and selling products on Amazon or your own Shopify website. Maybe for you it's building your own publishing business by selling and building your own library collection of books that you sell on Amazon. Maybe for you it's building your own marketing agency and providing that as a service to other entrepreneurs and other companies out there. Or maybe for you it's being an influencer, being a YouTuber, being someone on Instagram, someone that puts out content, adds value, attracts people to you, makes money through advertising revenue or collaborations or sponsorships. Or maybe it's affiliate marketing by finding other people's products you want to promote. Maybe it's a drop shipping business. There's so many opportunities out there. But you've got to identify what is the one that you're going to go all in with. What is the one for you that you're going to commit to fully? Because that's what it takes to succeed. A lot of people, they don't succeed because they're dabblers. A lot of people, they've got one foot in, one foot out. They don't go all in in their business. And when I talk about going all in, I'm talking about once you know what your business is, you've got to master it. You've got to learn everything you possibly can about this business. You've got to you know, study marketing and go through courses and go through training programs and find mentors and learn from your competitors. And, and you've got to keep going deep on that subject in order to be successful with it. And unfortunately, a lot of people that want success or want to build a business, they've never had success at any other point in their life. And so they don't know the process. They don't know the process of success and what it really takes and requires to be successful at something. And so for a lot of people, they put in some effort and they don't see the results they want and they give up and they jump onto the next thing and they put some effort into that and they don't see the results they want and they jump onto the next shiny object and they never master anything. They just kind of stand in this land of dabbling and they never go deep enough because they're really afraid of failing. And to be successful, you've got to burn your boat. So you've got to go all in on it and say, you know what, I'm going to find the way, I'm going to make the way with this business. And I believe that if you really truly do that, you'll be successful. Because your success in your business often is not based on your business or your product or the opportunity. You can have success with Amazon. You can have success as an agency. You can have success as a YouTuber. There's many different things. You can have success with all of them. But oftentimes when people don't succeed, they blame the opportunity. They blame Amazon, they blame YouTube or Google or something else except for whom? Themselves, right? But when you recognize, you know what, to be successful, I've got to go in, I've got to learn, I've got to master, I've got to give it my all, right? When you have that mentality, you will be successful at whatever it is. If you become one of the best and you put in your 10,000 plus hours to master it, you cannot not succeed in whatever it is that you're pursuing. And yeah, you might fail or make mistakes and, you know, failure is just speed bumps on the way to success, right? You've got to go through those and not lose enthusiasm along the way. So as long as you have that right mentality going into your business, you'll succeed with it. You might have to make adjustments and pivots and maneuvers and change your approach from time to time and be flexible in your approach. But whatever industry or business or platform or vehicle that is, you've got to commit to that fully. That's step number one. Step number two is you've got to know who your ideal customer is. Who is your ideal customer? Not your customer right now, your ideal customer. Because every business, there's going to be someone, an avatar, a customer avatar, that you've got to know who that is so that you can direct your attention for the other steps to really serve them. See, in order for you to be a successful entrepreneur, you've got to know who your ideal customer is and you've got to go deep enough to understand what are their desires. What are their goals and what are their needs? What are their wants? And what are their problems? What are their biggest challenges? What are their biggest pain points that can help eliminate for them and solve their problems? Because an entrepreneur is someone that solves people's problems at a profit. And you can't do that if you don't know what they are, right? So if you have your own product on Amazon, you've got to know who would be buying this product, who would love this product, who would love my brand and what I'm about, right? You've got to identify who that person is. Because if you know who that person is, then you can create and innovate your product to over-deliver. You know how to attract that person, how to market, and where to find them, 
right? If you know what their problems and challenges are, then you can really meet those needs and help them overcome them. And as a result of that, they're gonna want to buy your product because that's really what they're buying your product for, right? They're buying it for the solution that you're providing for them or how you're helping them fulfill a certain need, desire, or a want. So with that process, it's very speculative at the beginning, but as you have your business, you wanna continue to learn about your customers. Continue to learn about them, ask them questions, engage with them, do a survey to learn more about them so that you can better pivot your business and adjust and grow your business to continuously fulfill their needs and solve their problems. Okay, that's step number two. Step number three is you gotta create an irresistible offer. An irresistible offer. You've gotta create a product or create content or whatever your business is, a book, you gotta make it irresistible. You gotta make it so compelling that the person you know, cannot not buy your product, that when they come across your offer, they're like, oh my gosh, this is such a great deal, this is such a great value, this is solving my problem, this is fulfilling my need, and it's a great price, and I'm getting this, and I'm getting that. You almost want it to be that you know, the customer feels like you are getting the short end of the stick. Like almost like the customer thinks, oh my gosh, this guy's not that smart. This company's not that smart. They're giving me this, this, and this for only that amount of money. I'm ripping them off. If you can create that kind of dynamic, then you're gonna create a raving fan customer. So you gotta create an offer that's so irresistible. And oftentimes a lot of people, they just kind of do the status quo. They kind of settle for mediocrity. They don't really go above and beyond and they don't really stand out as a result of that. Now, to create the irresistible offer, you have to be innovating. Uh, Peter Drucker, one of the greatest business minds in, in, in history, said that really business is innovation and marketing. Innovation is finding a way to do something better than anyone else. Making a product easier, better, cheaper, faster, um, more compelling, more attractive, just a better quality product. And if you look at all the great companies in the world, what makes them sustainable is that they're always innovating. Right? If you look at Apple, for example, they're always innovating. They're always creating a better iPhone, a better MacBook, a better whatever it might be. Because if you don't, if you don't grow, what happens? You die. So maybe you want to build a business and build it to a certain point and you're just happy and complacent to make $10,000 a month for a few years of that and that's fine. But if you stop innovating, that business is going to die. It's not going to continue to last for five years and 10 years. So for you as the entrepreneur, you have to understand the responsibility that you have to always be innovating and finding new ways to fulfill your ideal customer's desires and to solve their problems. If you can do that, you'll be incredibly successful. So what does that look like? Well, if you've got your product on Amazon, then you want to figure out how can I make it even more irresistible? How can I improve the packaging? How can I improve the price? How can I get more reviews? How can I include some bonuses that when someone buys this, they're gonna get the ebook and they're gonna get the video training and then they're gonna get these additional products and I got a better guarantee than everybody else does, right? And you're being creative in that way where you can make it more irresistible because if you don't, then guess what? Your competitors, they're gonna be making their product more irresistible and they're always gonna be innovating and you gotta, you're gonna be left behind. If you're a YouTuber, if you're someone like myself, hey, I know who my ideal customer is, I know who my ideal follower is, who I'm trying to attract, and it changes based on how, how I grow, too. But as a YouTuber, I'm always trying to think, hey, how can I grow and improve myself so that I have more to give? So I've gotta learn, I've gotta, I can't slow down. If I stop learning and growing and evolving and innovating myself, then my content, my videos aren't gonna be as relevant, they're not gonna be as valuable, and people are gonna stop watching. So as a YouTuber, as an influencer, I've got to even innovate in terms of my video editing. I've got to innovate in terms of the aesthetics and you know, you know, every part of the process of what I do as a YouTuber. Same thing if you're an affiliate marketer, continuously learning about affiliate marketing, but thinking about that the products that you're promoting, how can you make it even more irresistible by perhaps offering your own bonuses that someone will get if they buy the product through you? Right? So that's a way that you can innovate as an affiliate marketer. Or if you're an affiliate marketer, you're running advertisements or on Facebook or Google or on YouTube, you wanna think about how you can make those even more compelling and even more attractive and innovate those, right? So that they're even gonna perform better because if you don't, then other advertisers on those platforms are gonna outcompete you. So you've gotta be innovating to, be, uh, to build your brand and to attract people to you and have such a great offer that they're gonna wanna buy it. Number four is you've got to market your product. You've got to sell your product. You've got to market and promote your brand. 
Because if you don't, then no one's gonna find out about it. You could have the best product in the world, you could have the best content on YouTube, you can have the best product on Amazon, the best course, whatever it might be, but if you're not attracting people to you, then no one's gonna benefit from it. So you have an obligation, an ethical and moral obligation, especially if you believe that your product's valuable, that you have a great offer that other people will benefit from, you know it'll solve problems, you have the obligation to sell it. And sell, you know, sales is like this word that a lot of people can be uncomfortable with. But it's just a belief and interpretation that you have around it. Because if you really believe in what you have to offer people and that it can help them, then I believe you're doing them a disservice by not getting it in front of them. You're doing them a disservice by not providing that for them because that can serve them and help them and solve their problems in so many incredible ways. Nobody changes in the world. Nothing changes in history until someone is influenced and sold. That's what changes the entire world, right? So you're gonna have to learn marketing and learn sales. And when it comes to that, there's many different avenues that you're gonna have to learn. You might pick one that you first start with, right? So if you're selling on Amazon, figuring out Amazon, how to attract people using Amazon ads and Amazon search, right? Or maybe it's learning YouTube and how to create content on YouTube to attract people or finding influencers on YouTube or Instagram and learning that strategy and really refining that and getting that down. Maybe it's running advertisements on Google or Facebook or on YouTube. Maybe it's using the media and PR. Maybe it's building a blog and doing search engine optimization. Maybe it's using Instagram or Facebook groups. There's so many different strategies out there, but you've got to master it. You've got to go deep. You've got to learn. You've got to put in the effort and continuously learn it with it because it's really you know, a long-term journey if you're going to build your successful business. So you can't give up with that, and you have to continuously learn how to market and new ways of marketing. And when it comes to marketing, you have to maybe learn some psychological triggers of what influences people. You might have to learn about copywriting and how to be more compelling with your language and the words that you're using. You might have to learn how to optimize your website, your product, packaging, the design of it, and the headlines, and the thumbnails that you use, and all those different factors. Those are important parts of marketing, which really is just trying to get people's attention. right? And there's a lot of people out there trying to get other people's attention, trying to get your ideal customer's attention, and so that's why you have to really master that and go deep with that process of marketing. One of my favorite ways of marketing is called VAM, Value Added Marketing. I use YouTube, I use platforms on social media. I try to add massive value. I try to give more than what you can expect. I try to over deliver. I try to you know, put together great quality content and make it really valuable. And by doing so, people are attracted to it there is a level of trust that gets cultivated as well. And as a result of that, I don't really have to focus on marketing and selling that much. I can mention to you, hey, if you want to learn more, I've got this product or check out my website or put, you know, go to this link over here. And because there's already a relationship that's been established through the value that I provided for you, then you know, people are going to naturally want to learn more about my product or my brand or my company. And you know, if they receive great value here, then oh my gosh, they're gonna, like, they're gonna love the, the, co- the, the products and everything else that I have to offer. So, so for me, that's one of my favorite ways that I've learned and mastered. Uh, one of my favorite definitions of marketing is that marketing, you attract who you want and you repel who you don't want. And that's part of being a marketer is, is not trying to be everything for everybody. You're never gonna make everybody happy. You gotta know who your ideal customer is, who you're trying to cater to, find out where is this person, how can I meet their needs, how can I advertise to them, how can I target them, are they on YouTube and what would they search for on YouTube, are they on Facebook, what would they search for, what would they look for, what would their interests be so I can target them, right? And that starts, by the way, with again, knowing who your ideal customer is. And and by doing so, you're gonna be able to attract them to you and to be able to build your business through that. So marketing is so key and you're gonna repel those that are not the right fit for you, those that are not your ideal customer, and that's okay, that's awesome, they can find someone else that can meet their needs or solve their problems or that they resonate a lot more with. Step number five is you gotta deliver more than what's expected. You gotta over deliver. You gotta under promise and over deliver. And that comes with your marketing, your products, your services, every part of your business. That's how you're gonna build a raving fan customer. A raving fan customer is that someone's gonna buy from you again and again and again. Someone that's gonna spread the word. They're gonna be a raving fan, they're gonna tell their friends, they're gonna tell your family, they're gonna be a repeat customer. Because we live in a hard time where it is to get people to buy from you the first time because you have to establish trust and relationship most often to get someone to buy. But once you do have someone that buys from you and you've over delivered, it's so much easier to get them to buy from you again and again and again. Right? And that's how you can build that deeper relationship 
with your customers. So finding out how can I over deliver? How can I give them more than what they expect? Right? How can I give them better customer support or provide a community for them or you know, allow them to identify with my brand and what we really are about so that they can get involved in it and feel like that they share the same identity that, that, that you do. If you can do that, that's how you're really going to build a, a successful, sustainable, long-term business that can really scale. So those five steps, master those steps. You can master your business. You can achieve whatever amount of money you want to make, whether that's $10,000 a month, $100,000 a month, $200,000, a million dollars a month. I mean, obviously, there's companies that are multi-billion dollar companies. It's because they've mastered the steps of what I'm sharing with you right now. And I've been able to do this and have success with this in my businesses, on YouTube, knowing who my ideal customer is, learning as much as I can about YouTube and how to do a you know, better quality job and how I can create irresistible content and how I can market and attract people through it and over deliver, over deliver, over deliver. That's probably why you're watching me right now and, and subscribe to my channels because I've over delivered and create content that you find valuable. And I've turned that into a successful business. And the same thing goes with Amazon. The same thing goes with affiliate marketing and my own courses and coaching and whatever else it might be. These five steps apply to everything. So what is the step that you need to focus on the most? Leave a comment below. I want to know what that is. What do you really need to master right now? Is it step number one, choosing what your niche is, choosing what your business is in that vehicle and committing to it? Maybe it's a mindset of just you know, focusing on it fully and not dabbling and just mastering it. Maybe you got to learn more and go through a lot more to learn about what it takes to be successful in this business. You know, maybe it's knowing who your customer is. Maybe you're a little bit lost on that. You got to figure out what that is. Maybe it's creating your irresistible offer. Maybe you've got an offer. It's just not irresistible enough. Or maybe it's marketing. Maybe you've got the offer, but it's not the offer. It's just you're not marketing it. You're not attracting people to your offer. They're not finding out who you are and what you're about and having the opportunity to even purchase your product. And maybe you've got customers, but you're not over delivering. You're not giving them more than, than what um, they expect and you're having a hard time scaling it because you're always in that process of finding new customers rather than building that raving fan base. And once you do that, the business will grow a lot easier from that because they'll spread the word, they'll share it with their friends, they'll buy more from you, they'll leave reviews, you know, all of that stuff will take care of itself. So what is the one for you that you need to focus on most? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. Subscribe more here on Project Life Mastery and turn on that Click that bell icon to turn on notifications. And by the way, if you're having a hard time choosing your vehicle, I'll link below to a quiz that I put together for you. If you go to www.projectlifemastery.com slash quiz, it's a quiz that will take you maybe 90 seconds to complete. Asks you a few different questions based on how much money you have to invest, you know, what the reason is why you want to start your business, um, a few other questions that will help you identify which online business opportunity might be the best fit for you. So if you go to projectlifemastery.com slash quiz, click the link below, head on over there, take that quiz. I'll help you decide which direction you should go and, and provide some resources to help you get started with it. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you again in the next video.